focus of this video is the topic linker of OD dysfunction. This condition is often not, not well understood even by experienced clinicians. In this video we will find out what it is, what are the types, its symptoms, investigations and treatment. It is important to differentiate that this condition is associated with pain after the removal of gallbladder and typically in females aged between 30 and 50. To understand this, we have to look at these two cartoon drawings. The food comes down into the stomach, which churns it on, and it passes it into the small bowel, where it is met with bile and the pancreatic juice that digests the fat and other dietary contents in the small bowel. The liver produces bile, which comes down this main tube. The gallbladder has been removed to show that this condition predominantly occurs after the removal of the gallbladder, and the bile then comes down the bile tube, and for a short while, bile tube is parallel to the pancreas. Now let's look at this area worn out in the green circle which is the focus and this shows the bile tube traversing the pancreas alongside the pancreas tube which is this and at the bottom end of the bile tube is a smooth muscle sphincter which goes around the bile tube and then in a figure of eight it goes around the pancreas tube and it is this smooth muscle which is called the sphincter of OD and it is thought that this, this the dysfunction of this sphincter around the bile tube is the main cause of sphincter of OD dysfunction. Other component around the pancreas tube shown over here causes pancreatic related symptoms in some patients. There really are two types of sphincter of OD dysfunction. One is the biliary type due to problems with this area of the sphincter around the bowel tube and the less common and less well understood pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction due to the sphincter around the pancreas tube. Be able to diagnose this condition, the symptoms have been very precisely defined, specifically pain, and it has to be biliary type pain which means pain below the right side rib cage that is greater than 30 minutes and may last up to a few hours and this occurs on more than one occasion that is spread apart from each other that is severe enough to stop doing what the patients are doing and sometimes may these patients may end up in the hospital that it occurs at different time intervals as I've explained and this is not related to bowel movements and it is not related to posture or to acid suppression in the stomach or the gut. And the reason for such a precise definition of pain is to differentiate it from all other causes of pain, such as from the gullet, the stomach, the small bowel, gallbladder stones in the bowel tube, biliary crystals in the bowel tube, irritable bowel, and a host of other conditions. Issue with the pancreatic sphincter of OD dysfunction causes recurrent attacks of acute pancreatitis. What investigations are required to diagnose this? There are the basic investigations, then there are others to rule out other conditions and then there are specialist investigations specifically for the sphincter of OD dysfunction. Basic ones are the liver function tests. These measure the level of bilirubin in the blood and the liver enzymes indicative of holdup of bile as well as an ultrasound scan assessing the bile tube size in particular because if there is a holdup to the flow of bile, the size of the bile tube becomes bigger. Other investigations that are frequently performed are endoscopic ultrasound which consists of an endoscope with an ultrasound scanner attached at the tip and a very precise ultrasound assessment is carried out of the whole of the biliary tract as well as of the pancreas. An MRI or an MRCP, an endoscopy may be performed both upper and lower but specifically in the stomach and the gullet assessing other causes of pain and a CT scan to assess the pancreas and the liver. The specialist tests include biliary manometry. This basically is an endoscopic assessment where a tiny catheter is inserted into the bile tube and this measures pressure within the bile tube in some cases where the diagnosis may be of doubt and this investigation is carried out only in specialist centers there are some clinicians who question its utility a radionuclear tests where a radio labeled dye is given to the patient which is excreted in the bile and any holdup may be apparent and yet again these two tests should only be performed in units which are experienced in the assessment and how to interpret these tests and these are by no means routine. So how do we diagnose the sphincter of OD? So we differentiate between the biliary type, types 1 and 2 are very typical and the type 3 is not typical, the pancreatic type. So we have to differentiate biliary from the pancreatic in trying to ascertain whether the problem is over here bottom of the bile tube or whether it is pancreatic sphincter that is of concern. So for the biliary type if patients have pain and they have deranged liver function tests and the bile tube is dilated these deranged liver function tests return to normality in between attacks then that is a very strong indication that the patient who has had gallbladder removed perhaps suffers sphincter of OD dysfunction. However if there is only pain but none of the 
other features, bile duct is not dilated and the liver function tests are normal, then this is called the type 3 and this is not your typical sphincter of orderly dysfunction. And the treatment of these two subclasses is very different indeed. Pancreatic type diagnosed this. Very extensive investigations are required to rule out all other causes of pancreatitis. I've done a separate video on that and I'll link it in the description. And it's only a diagnosis of exclusion. You have the biliary type which are fairly typical and the pancreatic type which is less common and less well. How do we treat this? Well the fairly typical sphincter of orderly dysfunction, the prescribed treatment which is quite effective is putting an endoscope down through a procedure called ERCP. It is parked at the bottom end of the bowel tube and the sphincter is divided so as to make this opening bigger and allow the bile to flow out much more easily procedure called endoscopic sphincterotomy. This disables the sphincter at the bottom end of the bowel tube. The bile, as I described, can now flow out without hold up. And this may treat the condition for the types 1 and 2 I described in 7 to 9 out of 10 patients. In the biliary type 3 sphincter of orderly dysfunction, not very typical. The patient may have biliary type pain, but none of the other features. Only medical treatment is indicated. And a number of drugs, which include painkillers, calcium channel blockers and other agents to reduce the spasm are utilized. The endoscopic sphincterotomy has no function in this. Finally, the pancreatic sphincter of orderly dysfunction, again, that is, this is not commonly treated in this way and it's less well understood as I described earlier. And once decision is taken to treat this, the treatment is fairly similar to what I've described for the biliary type, where commonly either through an endoscope or through surgery, opening to the pancreas tube is made bigger so that there is no hold up to the flow of the pancreas juice. The success rate, however, for this is around 50%. The endoscopic treatments are also associated with the complication rate of between 15 to 20% and this is not to be taken lightly. This completes this brief overview. If you have any comments, please do share.